delightful Donna. Today we're making apple crisp bites for a simple dessert. Let's get started. So I'm gonna chop three apples and you can do this however you like. This is how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna chop these. We want them to be about quarter inch pieces roughly. So this is how I'm slicing. And I'm leaving the peel on. You can peel them if that's what you like, but my family doesn't uh, mind the peel. Actually, we prefer to have it on. So I'm gonna do this. We're gonna get all these chopped up and put into the pan so that we can start sauteing them. And what we're essentially doing here is just making an apple pie filling instead of slicing or chopping so that they'll fit in our little mini muffin cups. We forgot we need to preheat our oven. Let's preheat our oven to 350. There we go. That would have been bad. All right, we have one chopped up and put into the bowl over here. Um, first, I just want to say that you can use any type of apple you want. A lot of people like to use a Granny Smith apple when making apple pie, and you certainly could use that here. Um, first and foremost, I'm using what I have on hand, which is a Cosmic Crisp because that's the apple that we eat in our house. But again, you know, you could use whatever type of apple your family likes. It comes out good with anything. And then if you're afraid that you can't chop your apples fast enough um, before they turn brown, then you could put in this, uh, in your bowl to hold your apples, you could put a little bit of Sprite, the soft drink. I know that sounds odd, but it keeps them from browning. Or you could do a little lemon juice and water. I'm hoping I'm gonna chop mine fast enough so they don't brown, but we shall see. And if they get a little brown, it's really not that serious because you're gonna put some apple pie spice in here, which is gonna make the, the filling kind of a brown color anyway. So nobody will ever know your secret. <laughs> so don't be afraid to try something because you just because you think, oh, I can't do that. I don't think I can chop fast enough or I don't think I have all the right ingredients. You're gonna see here in, in a little bit that, you know, I'm not, I'm not perfect, you know, I'm just a home cook. So I have to make substitutions sometimes too. And I'll tell you that this particular recipe actually calls for cinnamon and, I can't remember, cinnamon and something, nutmeg. And I didn't have any nutmeg and I thought, well, I really do wanna make this recipe because it looks really delicious. I have not made this before, but um, I didn't have the nutmeg. But when I went to my cabinet, I had apple pie spice. And when I looked at it, apple pie spice has nutmeg in it. So then I'll just omit the cinnamon and just use the apple pie spice in, in place of cinnamon and nutmeg. So you can always uh, kind of get around, make things your own. Don't be afraid to experiment in the kitchen because isn't that what cooking is all about? Is just making things your own the way that your family likes it or the way that you like it. So don't ever be afraid of that. Jump in with both feet. All right, so we are almost done. Just one more. Listen, I don't have the best knife skills, guys. Like I tell you guys all the time, I'm just a home cook. I'm not a trained chef, so this may not, you know, be perfect. They may not be all uniform, but it's close enough. All right, so let's get, we have a pan on the stove. And I'm gonna get two tablespoons of butter. And yes, I use the same knife, calm down. We're gonna put two tablespoons of butter in this pan. And then we're gonna turn the heat on. This is the part that my, my husband hates to film, guys, just so you know. Because when his pan starts going and starts sizzling, he's like, it's too loud. <laughs> All right. We're thinking about investing in some microphones that we would wear that I would wear like on my apron so that you guys don't hear so much background noise or sizzling in the pan etc so leave a comment tell me what you guys think of that you think that that's a good idea 
and we've been uh, doing some research and trying to see if, if that's gonna work for us. Maybe help out the sound quality a little bit better for you guys as well. Okay, so we're just gonna let this butter start to melt. And I did take this straight out of the refrigerator. This is not uh, room temperature, this is refrigerated butter. So it'll take just a second. There's a reason for that in the next step that we want the butter to be cold. All right, and you're gonna want this on a medium high heat. You don't want the butter to burn. And now it's mostly melted, we're gonna put in our apples. Okay. All right. Just toss them around a little bit. Get that butter coating all of the pieces. See, had an escapee. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to get the rest of my ingredients, which is a third of a cup of brown sugar. I'm using light brown sugar. You could use dark. It's whatever you prefer. And I'm going to, anytime you're using brown sugar, you want to pack it into your measuring cup. That'll give you the most accurate measure. And I am at about a third. About a third. All right. Okay. And then we're going to take some apple pie spice. And it originally called for a teaspoon of cinnamon and an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. So we're going to do one in an eighth so that we match that measurement. So there's one. And I don't know if you guys have these um, or have seen these measuring spoons before that I'm using, but they're awesome. And I don't like to, I'm not sponsored and I don't, you know, usually promote companies, but these are made by Pampered Chef. And I have had these easily 25 years and they still work so great and this is like the tablespoon one and this is the teaspoon one and they, they're just so great because you can just measure up adjust your measurement so i love them okay now we're going to do two tablespoons of water so you see i'm using my tablespoon one two tablespoons of water And we're just going to mix that up. And a splashy splash. I remember we talked about the filling is going to turn a little bit of a brown color, so you see that happening now. So if your apples turned a little brown while you were chopping, don't worry about it. Just adds to the charm. And you can see those spices really coating the apples. Though. Man, that looks great. We're just going to cook these for about three or four minutes. We just want them to get not completely soft, but a little bit softened. And then after about three or four minutes, we're going to add some cornstarch to thicken it up. All right. Okay, now we're going to get started on our dough. So we're going to need three-fourths of a cup of brown sugar. Go in and remember what we said, we're going to pack the brown sugar into this. Again, doesn't matter if it's light or dark, use what you like. And that's about three fourths. Boom. And then we are going to put some flour. And we need a cup of flour. Make sure that your flour is loose in here and kind of shake it into your cup. And I, this is a half a cup measure that I keep in my flour. Just makes it easier when I'm going to bake or cook anything that I have that measure already in there. So that's my cup of flour. <clears throat> and we're going to do a cup of oatmeal. You can use uh, self-rising or self-rising, quick cooking or regular oats. Well, maybe if I can get it open. Okay. 
Oh, too much. All right, there's our oatmeal. All right, now we're gonna get eight tablespoons of butter. That's we measured earlier. And pull the paper off. Should've got a garbage bowl, as usual, I didn't. All right, and now we're going to use a pastry cutter. If you've never seen a pastry cutter, it looks like this. Let me stir real quick. Yeah, nicely, you can see they're just starting to soften a little bit. We'll add some cornstarch in just a minute. All right, as I was saying, pastry cutter. So this is what it looks like. These are like blades, they're not sharp sharp, but these are like blades down here. And again, this is Pampered Chef, but you get whatever you want. And the uh, idea of this is to cut this butter into the flour and oatmeal mixture. Sometimes it gets a little stuck. And so the goal is to continue to kind of chop and press it in until we get a crumbly texture. Okay, so I've been working it for a couple of minutes here, maybe a minute and a half or so. And you can see it's starting to get a little bit more crumbly in texture. And this is where I was saying that you wanna make sure that you're using cold butter. If your butter is too soft, you won't get that crumbly texture. It'll just kind of smoosh up into a ball. And you really want the crumbs. This is gonna be our crust. All right. Just got a spatula here and I'm just mixing it up a little bit. I'm gonna get just a little bit more chopped. And you want your little crumbles to be about pea size, roughly. here and you see it's getting like a syrupy consistency. So now we're going to want to add our cornstarch. I'm going to put about a tablespoon of cornstarch. And then another tablespoon of water. We're going equal parts here. And this is just so it will thicken it up just slightly. You don't want this to be running all over the place. See, it immediately thickens that syrup up. Okay, just stir that in real good. Okay. You just want to stir it up so and make sure that you don't see any lumps of cornstarch in here. And cook it for another one to two minutes. Just get those apples nice and tender. All right. So you can see now how it's really made a filling, like a, a true apple pie filling. It's sticky. Oh, that looks delicious. The apples are just tender. So we're gonna turn that off. All right, now I'm going to use uh, this scoop that I have, which is a table, one tablespoon scoop. We're gonna come on over here to our muffin pan. I'm using a square muff, uh, mini muffin pan. Uh, this is also Pampered Chef, I swear, not sponsored guys. I just really love their stuff, it's also practical. And then we're just gonna spray Another tip for you guys, you probably wonder why I'm spraying each individual. And that's because if you just go like this and spray all the way across, then all of this outside edge is gonna get too much of this Pam cooking spray. And then it, over time, it, the more you do that, even when you wash them in between, it just gets the pan really sticky and kind of wears them out. So that's why I do that. Okay, so now we're gonna take our crumb mixture 
and we're going to take heaping tablespoon. That's good. Okay, heaping tablespoon in each one. Oh, that might be too much. We'll see. Let, let's try one before we fill them all. Oh, no, I think it'll be good. Then we're going to take this little tool that I have. Now, if you don't have the tool, you can use your fingers to press them down, however you want to do it. But that's what we're going to essentially do. So heaping tablespoon each one. I'm going to fill all these up and then we're going to go back and tamp them all down. I'm making a mess as per usual. And okay, I'm just scooping them all in. A couple more here. There's a little bit extra of the topping, and I'll show you what you can do with that here in a bit. All right, so let's set that aside for now. Oops, I'm gonna spray this little guy because it seemed to get stuck the first time. Okay, as you can see, I learned from the first couple I was doing because they weren't pressing in right. And I was like, what is happening? This is a mess, but I was trying to press them too hard. So we're just trying to get a little crust on the bottom there. All right, now take our same scoop that we had over here. And we're gonna bring it a little closer to this. And now we're gonna put a scoop in each one. Like this. I know metal on the Teflon, don't yell at me. Okay, we filled each one of them up. Now we're gonna take a little bit more of this crumb mixture. I'm just using a spoon. Oh, I made a mess. We just wanna sprinkle just a little bit on top, but not a lot. Oops, I'm being messy today, guys. I don't usually cook like this. like we've talked about before. Not a professional, home cook, just trying things out. And this part is optional, you don't have to do this. I just think it'll, it'll come out nice. I suppose that remains to be seen. But since I had the filling or this uh, crust left over, I decided to do it. Okay, let's kind of scoop this on top of this one. Okay, now we're gonna put them in the oven. We're gonna bake these for, sorry, I have to look at my recipe, 15 minutes. And we'll come back and show you what they look like. Okay, timer went off, let's take a look. They look good. Mmm, they look really good. Okay, we have to let them sit in the pan for 10 minutes and cool, and then we'll pop them out. All right, so they've cooled for about 10 minutes now, and now we're going to use a little uh, spatula. We're just going to slide it down each side to loosen from the pan, and then we're going to pop them out. Look at that. Okay, I'm gonna say now, <laughs> just gonna admit something to you guys right now. I am very surprised that these came out. <laughs> I really thought this was gonna be a fail. I actually said to Rich, I don't know, this might not work. And he said, well, it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but it actually did work. I'm so surprised. I'll just take a couple out for now so that I can dress them for you guys. Now, um, what I want to do, you don't have to do this. This is just kind of to elevate a little bit. Um, I'm going to put some pre-made like store-bought caramel sauce and I'm just going to take a little bit and drizzle. What do you think of that? Does that look delicious or what? Let's just put that in there for now. Ooh, I cannot wait to try this. You see we have a little bit of the filling left over, but my husband was like, we're not wasting that. 
<laughs> Rich's favorite is apple pie, so he is on board with this. Um, I, I think though that you could make this with peach also, like a peach pie filling, wouldn't that be good? I think that would be great. Okay, let's give it a taste. Yum. Mmm. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. Those are delicious. It's like a little miniature apple pie. I don't know how to describe it. It's so good. It's a little bit crispy on the bottom. I think from the brown sugar and the butter in that crust, you're like caramelizing, got a little bit crispy and the apples are tender but not mushy. And the flavor is out of this world. My husband's gonna love these. So delicious. All right guys, I hope you make these. Leave me a comment down below and let me know if there's any other recipes that you'd like to see. Don't forget to follow us on all our social media and subscribe to our channel. That really helps our video get out to more people. And thanks for watching. Bye.